Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my tutorials on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. This is video number 48. I'm going to discuss the third in my subsection on the van der Waal model. So, the, I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. What we're really going to do here is just discuss Maxwell constructions or introduce them. I'm not actually going to go into much detail. The previous video to this, of course, is number four, are number 47 and 46, which are videos 2 and 1 on this. And if you're looking for the list of previous videos which you should look at in general, look at the first video in this series, or video number 46. So, we saw in video number 46 that if we plot on a PV diagram with V over V critical and P over P critical, for the van der Waal model we get something that looks like this. We'll say, I'm just going to draw two, two extremes, okay, with the bottom one there being kind of the archetypal uh, van der Waal PV diagram. All right, but um, if we look at this, right, let's say let's just mark some points in this. I'm going to mark. I'm going to redraw this because I only want to look at one, I suppose. Right? So that's the archetypal drawing. But let's just look at one of those. Right? So bear with me now when I just construct this. So I'm going to. And it's not going to be real, I suppose. But I'm going to draw it like this. Right? Just. And it does. Jeez, I'm so I'm so bad at drawing. It's not even funny. Let's say that it does this. And look, we know it doesn't. But let's say we get one that looks like this. So um, let's go to, I'm going to mark some points in it. I'm going to call this point here 1. I'm going to call this point here 2. This point here, um, this point here 3. This one here 4. This one 5. This one 6. And this one 7. Now, look at this. See, we need to analyze what the van der Waal model is telling us. If if we go from left or from right to left like this, what we're doing is we are decreasing the volume or increasing the pressure. So what we're doing is we're compressing our fluid. So we expect the pressure to increase. But while okay, so it's increasing, increasing, increasing as we compress. But here it seems to that as we decrease the volume, we are actually also decreasing the pressure. That makes no physical sense. So that means it's wrong. So the the model in this it, it fails here. But why does it fail? What can we think of? That it, what can, what physical um, phenomenon can we think of which might explain this? And what should pop into your head is a phase change. So what the van der Waal model um, doesn't will say predict, I suppose, as phase changes, or doesn't really analyze as phase changes, but it shows you where they happen. So we have phase change happening. Now, if we at the same time we plot the Gibbs free energy, you're just going to have to you're going to have to believe me that this is what it looks like. So if I plot the uh, P over P critical. Notice, by the way, I've gone from volume to, 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 to pressure, but here we have the Gibbs free energy. It should look something like this. It should look so, something like that. That's supposed to be a straight line, believe it or not. Okay, so it look, should look something like this. And if we use the same numbering system that it did up here, if you use the same numbering system, we'll get the following. We get there's point one, we have points two and six. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.7. Okay. Now, in equilibrium, the Gibbs free energy is minimized. So, if if you're if you're if during um, a transition or whatever, your Gibbs free energy is going up, well, then you're not going to be in equilibrium. That's very important. So, think about here. As we go from seven uh, down, what we're doing is is we're we're decreasing the pressure and increasing the volume. Okay, we're decreasing the pressure and increasing the volume. So we're going from 7 to 1. But we see, once we hit point, points 2 and 6, the Gibbs free energy actually increases again. So that doesn't then implies that there isn't equilibrium happening. And this is an unstable state. Alright, so the point is here is we have an unstable state, which is, of course, a phase change. So what Maxwell did, and Maxwell was a very smart guy, of course, so what Maxwell did is he came up with this thing called, which, which we now call a Maxwell construction. So he tried to, uh, he tried to, I suppose actually I probably shouldn't have gotten rid of that diagram. He tried, let's say that there's number seven, uh, there's, that was one, here's two and six. Right. What, what he tried to do, was he tried to work out what the, the change in the Gibbs free energy is. And we can see, of course, going around this particular loop. But of course, the change in the Gibbs free energy going around that loop is zero. 
So what we can see is that um, the, the integral of the loop of g is equal to zero. But he, like I said, he was a smart guy. He's, he already done some uh, electrodynamics or classical electrodynamics. And he saw that if he rewrote it as follows, if he rewrote it as follows, he could get it in a nice way because he, he realized that del g del p is actually v d p, like this. So in other words, he could evaluate this particular strange occurrence with the Gibbs free energy by looking at a, a, uh, a pressure versus volume diagram, which is exactly what we have up here, pressure, pressure versus volume. So what we see is we, we, we see that if we draw a horizontal line making points 2 and 6, uh, of equal areas, we're, we're making areas which I'm going to show now, we are able to uh, discuss the phase boundary. So what Maxwell did is this. He said, okay, I want to discuss the phase boundary, I want to discuss the Gibbs free energy. I see that the Gibbs free energy doesn't change and we can ana analyze this on a um, pressure versus volume diagram. So he connected, he, he drew, we'll say, points 2 and 6 and he came up with areas A and B as a result. That's supposed to be a B. Now the point here is that the area of A equals the area of B. That's the whole point. That's how he, def how, that's how he defined the points 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. He defined points 2, 3, 4 and 5, five and 6 such that the area of A is equal to the area of B. So if we are able to work out what, where uh, points 2 and 6 are for example such that we have areas A and B we're able to as a result, we're able to um, talk about the Gibbs free energy and therefore model where the phase boundary is. So, this, to say that once more, if we note the pressure at which point 2 and 6 occur, and we get that by making the areas of A and B equal, which is equivalent to minimizing the Gibbs free energy, we're able to plot our phase, phase diagram, or, or, or it's our phase, uh, phase point. So if we do that, what happens is we get rid of say this this part here okay and we also get rid of the part up here so we get this is our so our, our van der Waal starts looking like this and if you plot then isotherms of our van der Waal what you'll start getting is something along, something akin to we get this flat and it'll, it'll drop off like that okay and it's called the Maxwell construction but further to that what Maxwell did was Maxwell then looked at plotting the, on a, the, this, the, the pressure on a PT diagram. And I can hear a car on the background, so I'll finish very quickly. Okay, so what he did was this. He plotted on a PT diagram the pressure, as we'll say, there was did this, say, this, this pressure, he plotted this on a PT diagram. And on that, he got, he got this. Okay, and this, of course, here is the, the critical point, P critical. Uh, that's the critical point, and this is on a this is between our liquid and gas boundary. And I'm sure you've seen that in the past. So that's how we got. Well, that's how we plotted the uh, the liquid gas boundary and got the critical point by using the Maxwell construction. So look, I, perhaps that wasn't very clear, but um, that's my that's my best attempt at that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.